Deputy Speaker, I rise to just uh, speak to the motion before the House. Um, it is interesting to note, I think uh, it will be hard to argue any other way, there wasn't much conviction behind the delivery of this motion from the members opposite. Um, no, the, the, the member for Vash has scared them off. Um, the, re the reality is, the reality is, we're what uh, a week, we're a week and a half away from a federal election, and uh, we know that uh, when Bill Shorten made his uh, uh, trip to Perth just recently, it was reported that he was fighting for every vote, fighting for every vote. And no doubt uh, Bill enlisted the help of WA Labor and said, look, we've got to keep this scare campaign going. We've even got the AMA calling our bluff now. What else can you guys do? Come on, help us out, WA Labor. They say, that's OK. We'll, we'll dedicate a private member's time to a ridiculous motion. But look, any opportunity to talk about uh, the fantastic health system, system that we have, and particularly in the northern suburbs, is always welcome. And uh, I was always intending to use this opportunity to speak about uh, the Junior Love Health Campus, but I was equally bemused by the speech given by the member for Mira Booker. Uh, the speech itself made me think that perhaps the pre-selection season hadn't been finalised by the Labor Party yet, because that seemed like a, a pre-selection speech if ever I heard one. It would have made the left-wing faction of the Labor Party very proud. It was vitriolic. Anything that is privatised is evil. Uh, and uh, we, we heard the statement, and in fairness, it may have been the member for Warnborough interjecting, or the member for Mirabuka, so I'm not quite sure which of the two, but the statement was made, the public hate privatised services. The public hate privatised services. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute, especially when we do talk about uh, Joondalup. Uh, the member for Mira Booker went on and said that you know whatever we do, we need to make sure that the health services that we provide are affordable, equitable, effective, and efficient. I couldn't agree more. Again, let me come to Joondal up in a minute. And then the question uh, that was raised by the member for Mira Booker was, "Does fee for service result in good public health services?" It was like setting up Dorothy Dix's for me. So let's have a look at uh, Junilup Health Campus. We know that that is a model that operates under a uh, public-private partnership. <coughs> In fact, we just recently celebrated 20 years um, of that arrangement up in Joondalup. And I think it might be worthwhile just briefly uh, highlighting to, to members uh, a little bit of the history of that. In fact, uh, the public-private partnership at the Joondalup Hospital was initiated in 1996. And it saw the transformation, it was the move to a public-private partnership that actually saw the transformation of what was at the time the 84-bed Wanneroo Hospital to, uh, through that process, becoming, uh, at that point in time, a 335-bed. Member for Norway Central. The, the, the member should know clearly the rules are not hanging over the edge of a public gallery. If he can be removed, that will be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Thank you, Member for Norway Central. Member for, uh, member for Bassendine, can you step back from the rail? Thank you. I'm just so keen to hear from you. Yeah, I will not engage. Uh, sorry, I won't engage with conversation with the gallery. Will you step back and we'll go back to Member for Joondalup? Thank you. Yeah, the, the Member for Bassendine is welcome to come into the chamber. I'm not quite sure what he's scared of. He doesn't need the protection of the public gallery. Come on down. Come on down. Let's talk about the Joondalup Health Campus. Um, we've seen over the years uh, that uh, public-private uh, partnership continue to be supported by, obviously, the Liberal government, and we certainly continue to support it, but even under the, the Gallup and Carpenter Labor governments, uh, it was an arrangement that was supported. Member for Bassendine, are you testing my um, chairmanship of this House? I ask you to step back from the rail. Thank you. He's, he is slowly progressing Member, around to his side Member of the house. Um, more recently, we've seen um, further redevelopment works uh, finalised at the Joondalup Health Campus. And in fact, uh, in mid-2015, we saw the completion of what was at that stage a $215 million expansion, uh, which saw the uh, public beds go from 280 to 498. Uh, beds. We saw a new and expanded uh, standalone emergency department, um, an additional 120 acute medical and surgical beds, um, an additional 15 rehabilitation beds, 10 palliative care beds, expanded renal dialysis services, expanded chemotherapy services, 
an additional five theatres and improved clinical and non-clinical support services and facilities. Uh, it is without a doubt a fantastic uh, sub-tertiary hospital. Uh, we know that up until recently, uh, before the commissioning of Fiona Stanley Hospital, the Junior Health Campus Emergency Department was the busiest emergency department in Australia. And even now, while it is no longer the busiest, it is still one of the busiest and uh, comes in at just under 100,000 presentations a year. Obviously, we know Ramsey Healthcare at the moment provide the outstanding services that we've come to know and expect at Joondalup Health Campus under the public-private partnership. Uh, just recently, uh, members, uh, including the member for Ocean Reef and, and other members of the northern areas, were there for the opening of the tel uh, Telethon Children's Ward, an outstanding addition uh, to our hospital in the northern suburbs. Uh, this was a $12.1 million investment and it saw a, uh, the commissioning of a 37-bed uh, children's ward. Uh, now, that is obviously a significant increase to the previous paediatric unit that was there. Uh, and interestingly, when we talk about some of the benefits of partnering with a private sector, here's a perfect example. This development was co-funded by three parties, the state government, Telethon, and Ramsey Healthcare, uh, all put money in together uh, to put on uh, the development that now sees this outstanding children's ward providing services uh, to the communities in the north. Um, indeed, Telethon, I think they contributed about six million, the state about 3.1, and I think Ramsey uh, three million. We also know that in the recent budget, a further um, commitment was made to invest $7.1 million. Um, again, co-funded, so Ramsey Healthcare is providing uh, $2 million and $5.1 million is coming from the state government, and that will see the construction of a mental health observation area as an addition to the current emergency department, which will be only the second one in the state. The first one uh, opened at uh, Charlie Gardner's, and June Lup is now going to be the recipient uh, of the second one. So we've seen ongoing investment in this hospital. It is a fantastic hospital. Now, the Labor Party uh, has previously admitted, if you like, that privatising services, be they health services or whatnot, uh, save money. And we heard the uh, member for Dawesville speak to that as well. But in their own policy document, and I raised this in November last year, and I raise it again now, and I will raise it again in the future, the Labor Party has a clear position, uh, which we saw articulated wonderfully by the member for Mira Booker, that they have a strong aversion to any kind of privatised services. So in the 2015 policy document by WA Labor, uh, they quite clearly address their uh, policy position towards privatisation of health services should they be elected. And uh, Clause 75 under their health section on their policy document uh, clearly states, WA Labor opposes the privatisation of existing hospitals and their services. It goes on in statement number 76. WA Labor will not extend any contracts for privatised hospitals or services. And at number 77, WA Labor will negotiate early termination of these contracts and return these hospitals and services to public ownership as soon as possible. You know, the irony is a couple of weeks ago when Ramsey Health celebrated the 20th anniversary of the public-private partnership, um, this position didn't prevent uh, the member for Quinana uh, showing up, or the Honourable Ken Travers and, and a few other Labor members, uh, the Honourable Eric Ripper. Uh, you know, nothing was going to stop them from a bit of a free meal and a free drink and a bit of a dance on the dance floor, even though, should they be elected in March next year, they will be willing to throw potentially hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money out the window negotiating early termination clauses for any privatised health services. And even if they choose not to do the early termination, even if they allow the contracts to um, go through to completion, they're basically saying, we're putting it on record now, we don't like what you're doing, you're evil, and we will not renew uh, your contract. And you've got to then ask, what has the Joondalup Health Campus done so wrong to raise the anger of the WA Labor Party? Maybe we no, well, clearly. I mean, we know that they're saving the state money. We know that they're providing very efficient health services. Maybe the standard. It's also the happiest hospital in the state, according to 
Oh, I've got it right here, member. Thank you. Yeah, no, no. Look, we know we, we, we think alike up in the north, but uh, maybe before I get to the morale, but maybe the, the standard of service that the Junilab Health Campus is providing is substandard. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe, yeah, they're saving us money, but maybe at a substandard level. Well, we know that all hospitals, rightfully so, have uh, KPIs by which they're measured. That's what we would expect. And these are sensible KPIs around infection rates or uh, readmission rates or falls or medication errors. That's sort of things that you would want to measure a hospital by. And again, I raised the KPIs in November last year, but I think it's worth revisiting that. Let's have a look at how Joondalup does. So in the area of patient falls, Joondalup Health Campus performs twice as good as the public peer rate. In other words, when it's compared to the other public uh, hospitals, Junilab Health Campus does two times better with patient falls. Okay, uh, maybe that was a one-off. Maybe that's the only thing that they're good at. I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, in relation to unplanned return to theatre, which is pretty significant, you know, you've had an operation. Clearly, something didn't go right, and you've got to go back in there. It also performs two times better. Not bad. Double as good. In relation to unplanned readmission to hospital, they've let you go home. You've gotten sick again, you've got to go back in. It performs 11 times better than the public peer aggregate rate. 11 times better. In, re in relation to medication safety errors, now it's a quite a serious one. You know, we know that wrong medication can obviously lead to some serious consequences. It performs four times better. And in relation to patients developing pressure injuries, you know, that would be an indication of substandard care, it performs three times better. So let's just recap. We know they're saving us money. We know the previous Labor governments under uh, Gallup and Carpenter saw the value of what was initiated uh, by uh, the court government and, and continue to support the private-public partnership. Uh, the KPIs speak for themselves. They're publicly available, doing fantastically well. I don't believe so. Not that I came across, but you know, obviously these do get updated. And uh, the member for Ocean Reef, again, a proud supporter of the Joondalup Health Campus, campus uh, rightly pointed out that even in the Sunday Times, just gone, just a couple of days past, when they uh, had a bit of a chat about uh, the surveys of doctors at the various hospitals and the morale ratings of various hospitals, uh, clearly showed that Joondalup Health Campus has one of the highest morale scores you can get. In fact, it got an A+. Plus and it also scored 97% for staff morale and an A+. So the staff love working at the Joondalup Health Campus. Uh, the services that are provided are clearly superior to the public peer aggregate, and it's saving us money. Bizarre. But let's cancel it. Let's cancel it. In fact, let's throw taxpayers' money out the window. Why would they? By, why would they? Well, because they're loony. The loony left. But you know, there was another thing, like I said, I'll, I'll come back to that now, uh, that one other thing that we need to uh, look at, and that was that either the member for Warnborough or the member for Mirabook, I can't remember which of the two, but basically indicated that the public hate privatised services. So possibly, maybe that's why they choose to bring Joondalup Health, Health, Health Campus back in, under the public realm, that even though it is saving money, and even though it's performing really well, and even though the staff love it, Possibly they're doing it because the public hate it so much. Well, that doesn't hold up either. And like I mentioned before, I raised this matter a little bit more briefly. It was during an MPI, and I believe I had literally three minutes and 20 seconds to make my case. Um, uh, but literally, I raised it ever so briefly in November last year. I posted my little three-minute spiel on YouTube, linked to it on my Facebook page, and I'm quoting from my Facebook page, so anyone's welcome to you know, check it out themselves if you don't believe what I'm going to read out. And these, these were some of the comments that people posted on my Facebook page in relation to my little three-minute speech arguing why on earth would the Labor Party close down the relationship with Ramsey Health at Junilab Health Campus. These are some of the uh, respondents. Uh, wow, very interesting, Jan. Thank you very much for being so passionate about Joondalup. As an employee at Joondalup Health Campus, and a resident of Joondalup, I can see from the inside what a great facility and service the people of the northern suburbs have in the Joondalup Health Campus. I'll go on. Uh, Brendan Carey said, I went to the Joondalup Health Campus once to get my appendix removed. One of the best hospitals I've seen. Very modern facilities, well-organised staffing, 
and even had a free TV and my own room during my recovery. I didn't even have private hospital cover either, and I didn't have to pay a cent for my visit. Very lucky to have gone there. And just to be clear, these are not my staff or family members, uh, you, know, you know, putting that out there. Uh, another one. Yep. Thank you, Jan. Well said. I've been several times in Joondalup as a patient and twice in an emergency. Best hospital I've ever been to. Better treatment in public even than I had in a private hospital. Staff are just wonderful and caring. Keep up your passion for us, the people of Joondalup. And yeah, they interrupt you and cut into your time. Anyway, never mind. I'll forget that bit. Um, here we go. Another one. Well done, Jan Norberger. We need more like you with an intelligent attitude and drive. I tend to agree very much with that. I'm pretty sure I replied. We're grateful for your passion and patience. Uh, well, you know, if no one else compliments you. You've got to compliment yourself to get it onto public record. Uh, here we go. Well done, Jan. A well-run Joondalup Health Campus is integral to the future of not only Joondalup but Perth's greater northern metro region. Fully agree. Uh, thank you, Jan, for your passion in relation to our health system in Joondalup. My daughter is a newly qualified nurse at the hospital and I'm soon to be a patient there. I have friends and family members that have been to Joondalup Health Campus for emergencies and otherwise, and they've always been treated with the care and respect they deserve. Well done for your passion and support. And it goes on and it goes on. No, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll trust that members. You're welcome to follow me on Facebook. Have a look for yourself. It was on the 18th of November last year. But the reality is it doesn't stack up. The Labor Party's arguments don't stack up. They've all run off. They've left the member for Gosnells behind as a rear guard. The rear guard. The rear guard. Well, I'm looking forward. As the only Labor representative in the chamber, I welcome you to respond and explain why indeed the Labor Party's policy is that we have a hospital in Joondalup that is saving the state money, that is performing fantastically well against the peer aggregate against which we measure them. Outstandingly well. The staff love it. They give it an A+. Plus. It's got a 97 per cent morale satisfaction rating. He was indeed. He was indeed. In fact, the former member for Joondalup, Mr O'Gorman, was at the 20th anniversary as well. There were quite a few Labor people at the 20th anniversary, this big, beautiful gala ball celebrating 20 years of public-private partnership at Joondalup. They enjoyed the food, they enjoyed a dance, but you let them in, if you let them into government, they will terminate that agreement. Why? Are we getting too good a service? Are they not happy that, uh, that maybe the people of Joondalup maybe don't deserve such an outstanding health service? Is that why, they don't, is that why there aren't that many Labor members in the northern suburbs? That could be one of the reasons. I tell you what, as a Liberal Party, we believe that the members, the community members of the northern suburbs do deserve outstanding health services, and they're getting it. And they're getting it at the moment, as we speak. And so, as well. I, I agree. So I do not understand for a moment why on earth the Labor Party, to their credit and honestly, in their policy document, put it there black and white and basically say, if you let us into power, we will not renew the public-private partnership at Joondalup. In fact, we're even going to investigate options to terminate it early. How much would that cost? Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, may I seek a, a quick extension, please? Extension granted. Thank you. The other question is what would happen to the staff? What would happen to the staff? If the Labor Party came in, threw hundreds of millions of dollars out the window terminating privatised health services around the state, including at Ramsey Health, uh, I mean, good luck explaining to the people of Joondalup why, what on earth the hospital ever did wrong uh, to deserve it. But assuming they went through and did it, I'm assuming all the staff that are currently employed by Ramsey Health Services uh, would need to be made redundant, would need to be terminated. Their employment would <coughs> need to be terminated. Why? They're happy. They're happy. Member for Gosnells. The public is happy. Um, member for Joondalup. Member for Gosnells. Uh, Speaker, the member's gone on for a, at great length about the privatisation of the uh, Joondalup Health Campus. Uh, the reality is that's not what the motion's about. It's about the Medicare service, and it's uh, not what the member's addressing. He's giving himself lots of uh, self-congratulation as well. Thank you, member for it's not relevant. Um, uh, Please uh, address yourself to the motion, member for uh, Madam Joondalup. Deputy Speaker. Uh, member for Gosnells, you're, you're welcome to uh, uh, give me compliments too, if you like. It doesn't need to just come from my constituents, so don't feel left out. You'll get the opportunity <laughs> shortly. Um, look, the reality is uh, 
finishing off that line of thought, if these staff are terminated, what's going to happen to them? And it may well, well, may well be the case that uh, they get re-employed by the Department of Health. But what if they get told, no, no, but you won't get a job at the Joondla Hospital, now you're going to have to work at Fiona Stanley, or now you're going to have to work somewhere else. A lot of the people who work at Joondla Health Campus live in the area. They are passionate about the hospital that they work for, and they love working there. The community is ever so grateful for the uh, hospital and the, uh, the way that Ramsey Health uh, provides its services. The public like it, the staff like it, the treasurer likes it. I'm sure, there you go, the treasurer likes it. The only people who don't support the Joondalup Health Campus in the configuration it is at the moment is the WA Labor Party. And I'll finish off with this. The Joondalup Health Campus is a model that is viewed upon throughout Australia by other hospitals as an example of public-private partnerships done well. They constantly have visiting delegations from other hospitals having a look at the model as it's being operated and joined up by Ramsey Healthcare and it's used as a benchmark of what is done well. So why on earth would you cancel it? Why would you do that to the people of Joondalup? Because they don't support the northern suburbs. They don't support the northern suburbs. They don't want quality health care in Joondalup because clearly it's doing too good a job. We're being punished for having too good access uh, to health services at an affordable price. So, uh, like I said, I raised it in November, I raise it now, and I will raise it again in the future. But it's important, I believe, that the, member, that the community members of the northern suburbs, be they in the electorate of Joondalup, in the electorate of Ocean Reef, in the electorate of Kingsley, wherever they may live, that they understand the true risk and danger of a potential Labor government at a state level for what that will mean to health services for them. Because in your own policy document you clearly say, let us in and we will not renew any privatised health services and in fact we will investigate options for an early termination. Anyone that doesn't believe me, uh, go to the WA Labor website, check it out for yourself. It's there in black and white. Uh, really the shame is on the WA Labor Party. We will continue to fight for the uh, hospital that we so dearly love and for the arrangement that has seen not only a cost-effective solution to the state but also extreme quality, good quality health services being delivered to our community uh, for the uh, obviously uh, you know for the betterment of uh, the people of the northern suburbs. The community support it, the staff support it, there is no reason why you would want to cancel the current arrangement with Ramsey Healthcare providing this service in Joondalup. Thank you.